Hi guys, David here. As you might know, making our Murder of the Universe album review was a very long and difficult project. The reason was we didn't have the gizzards to complete the true vision we had for the album review, and we still don't have the resources for a Sketches of Brunswick East album review, or any of the other massive reviews we have in store for the future. We need to make a change! For us to continue the old way to make these big album reviews with the proper wizard lizards would make us INSANE by definition! Something big needs to be done, and that's exactly what we are going to do. Hopefully with a little help from you guys. In all seriousness though, this album is pretty sweet. If you haven't heard of them before, Winter's Sun started off as a side project of Yadi Manpa during his time as the guitarist and lead vocalist of Ensiferum, who play a folky style of melodic death metal. He left Ensiferum due to scheduling conflicts with recording the Winter Sun debut and touring with Ensiferum. The 2004 debut of Winter Sun was a particularly acclaimed album and showcased a compelling mix of power metal and melodic death metal, which Yachty had written over the course of several years. The first track was finished in 1996 and the last in 2003, and they were all recorded together in 2004. There's lots of double bass and blast beats, and the guitars switch between intense melodic passages and the energetic chugging of power metal. Yadi's characteristic snarl sat across most of the album, but his deep, clean vocals got plenty of room to shine on songs like Death and the Healing. There's also lots of speed changes. The beginning of the album is filled with blistering tracks like Beyond the Dark Sun and Winter Madness and Battle Against Time, and the back end had a lot of really slow tracks such as Death and the Healing and Sadness and Hate. Yadi has always been an ambitious musician, wanting to make things more melodic, more grand, and more epic, and Winter Sun's sophomore album, Time One, helped to further realize this dream. Time One released in 2012 and showed a significant leaning towards orchestration with a touch of Japanese influence. While there were prominent guitar parts on passages in Sons of Winter and Stars and Land of Snow and Sorrow, a large part of the music became focused on swelling instrumentation that leans more towards symphonic power metal than it does the melodic death metal that used to center the project. Flourishing guitar riffs and melodies around every corner have been replaced by rhythm guitar and fast-paced chugging, and melodies became more peppered across the album. And now we come to present day, and Winter Sun releases their third album, The Forest Seasons. The album is themed around the idea of the four seasons, and each track is supposed to represent the atmosphere that each season gives off. It starts off with Awaken the Dark Slumber, which is associated with spring. Then for summer is The Forest That Weeps, Eternal Darkness for Fall, and Loneliness for Winter. The Forced Seasons continues the progression towards orchestration that Time One saw, albeit a less drastic change than between the first two. There was plenty of negative space used during transitions and to add drama to the music on Time One, but on here finding some moment that isn't filled with lush orchestrations is pretty difficult. There is also a distinct black metal vibe that is very present across the album. There is lots of repetition, the harsh vocals are darker and more visceral, and there are more tremolo picked riffs alongside the already prominent rhythm guitar. This creates a huge wall of sound effect, most notably on Eternal Darkness. Overall though, this transition isn't much of a surprise. Even though Winter Sun started off a lot more stripped down, if you can call it that, Yadi has always had some symphonic leanings in his music, and almost 21 years is enough time to drastically change anyone's music style. So while we may not get another album similar to the form to the debut, the symphonic style that represents Winter Sun now is also pretty great. The album begins with some quiet instrumentation on Awaken the Dark Slumber. This use of quiet instrumentation that flourishes into a full track becomes a pattern across the album that helps to ease into these mammoth songs. The shortest track, The Forest That Weeps, is just over 12 minutes long, and this track reaches almost 15 minutes. But since there are only four tracks, this comes out to a pretty decent length of 54 minutes, which is just long enough to keep from being exhausting. The lyrics on this track are also some of the most refined that Yachty has done yet. It feels like now more than ever that Yachty is trying to tell stories with its lyrics as opposed to the more stream of conscious sound painting that was present on earlier albums. The vivid imagery from the lyrics is a really welcome change. This track starts off with some land entrenched in winter. Everything is dead and dark, and the music gives off a very cold and icy atmosphere. As the song progresses and the narrator feels like winter is never going to end, spring comes along and brings the land to life. It starts off with a hint of black metal with icy guitars, and it evolves into folky and melodic power metal. The Dimmu Borgir style vocals near the end of part one are pretty undesirable, but mixed well enough that they aren't bothersome. The second part becomes grand and flourishing with this swelling instrumentation and descriptions of breathing life back into this desolate landscape. The shadows and death disappear and are replaced with a lush and green forest. The musical theme used over this part of the track is probably one of my favorites across the album, 
especially during the passage around the 10 minute mark and later in the track when it's used along with harsh vocals. The combination of grand horns, guitars, and vocal layering is one of the most memorable parts of the album. After this is the forest that weeps, which creates a bit of disparity in the themes in the beginning. This song is supposed to represent summer, which brings to mind lush forests and hot, hazy days, but this beginning has a very ominous feel to it with some mid-paced second wave black metal chugging guitars. It has the most negative space of any song and is one of the more guitar focused tracks. It's also particularly dramatic, especially when Yadi sings the forest that weeps. He does this really huge vocal sweep and it sounds pretty good, but it's so over the top but that I can't help but laugh when I hear it. The latter part of this track is more aligned with the summer atmosphere though, with a gorgeous and quiet passage that sounds like something out of a movie soundtrack. I think that Yadi should take some time to score a movie and use the experience to get the most out of his compositions in Winter Sun, since the style he's going for benefits a lot from the grand and cinematic feel of movie scores. The theme later gets repeated by the guitars and this is another highlight of the album. The orchestration is at a comfortable place behind the guitars and this really gives them a chance to shine. I also really like how he repeats the lyrical structure here over the track as well. It has a very cyclical and poetic feel to it. Of the two darker tracks, Eternal Darkness is next. This is one of the longer songs with the most movements at four, and is the most heavily black metal influenced. There are blast beats throughout a huge chunk of the track and little room to breathe in this enormous creepy and distorted wall of sound. Unfortunately, this doesn't work to the music's favor all the time. The drums stick out a little bit too much here. The snares just don't sound quite right in the mix. They would benefit from being mixed down a bit so that the drum sound doesn't drown out the orchestration or the guitars. This is mostly a problem during the blast beat sections, which takes up about half of the track. However, it sounds fine during the more double bass intensive drum passages. The vocals, however, are best on this track. The bassist, Yuka Koskinen, has some harsh vocals peppered across the album, usually echoing a portion of Yari's line, but here Yari and Yuka's vocals are layered and it sounds amazing. It's just so visceral and intense, and it fits great into the dark atmosphere of this track. Yari's harsh vocals are usually more of an aggressive snarl, but there are several points on this track where he really pushes his voice into this piercing shriek, which sounds awesome, especially when he sustains it, like near the end. I'm hoping he does this more on the next Winter Sun release. The drum fills in part 3 are also particularly cool, especially when paired with the melodic guitar solo. This in the spoken word part near the beginning of part 3 is a bit of a throwback to the Winter Sun debut. Part 3 also includes a bit of an evolution on this sound, where there is a bit of a breakdown and the music becomes slow and heavy, which was pretty surprising to hear. The last part returns to the blast beats used in part 1, and it ends really abruptly. It feels a bit awkward and I'm not really a big fan of it. It starts to make sense after repeated listens to the album, but I think it would have sounded great if the instrumentation stopped and he sustained the note instead of ending the track as suddenly as it did. The song works pretty great as a whole though, and I really like how the themes from the beginning are used in the closing moments. The final track, Loneliness, is the slowest and most somber on the record. It features the most clean vocals and overall the most stripped down instrumentation. There are no walls of sound to be found here, and it stays at a relatively slow pace throughout its runtime. There is only one verse of harsh vocals and it does the excellent layering that appeared in Eternal Darkness. This track is the most linear on the album as well. There is little repetition in the verses and a large chunk of this track is instrumental. There's also a really pretty and icy solo in the middle. Despite the relative lack of orchestration, this track gives some very vivid mental imagery of being trapped in a barren white wasteland. There are some really delicate vocals used here for a bit near the end. And they're a little much for me. It's a little too dramatic and it almost sounds like a ballad, but thankfully this is only really used at this part near the end. I'd also like to note that putting this track at the end was a pretty good choice. Having a track that's slower, stripped down, and more repetitive is a good way to end an album that's so full of vast walls of sound and instrumentation. And it makes for a pretty good palate cleanser to show the album out. With this album, Winter Sun have crafted another grand, dramatic, and over-the-top piece of melodic metal, while easing their way into these new black metal influences. Every track has something to offer here, whether it be the grand and epic orchestration of Awaken from the Dark Slumber, the fun folkiness of the forest that weeps, the intense and visceral wall of sound and eternal darkness, or the delicate, melodic, and relatively stripped down loneliness. This is a pretty great album that certainly demands your attention to pick out the nuances and get a grasp on the immense layers of instruments here. The production is handled well and manages to capture the fine details of each track without losing any power in the music, despite the little snare drum misstep in Eternal Darkness. If you give this album the time of day, it has a lot to offer, and it has me excited for the next offering by Winter Sun.
If you're a fan of symphonic metal of any kind, then you absolutely must check this out. If you're a fan of folk metal or melodic death metal, then you'll probably find a good chunk of material to enjoy here. If you're not big into symphonic metal or tracks that are long and repetitive, then this may be a bit of an overbearing listen for you. What did you think of this album? I would love to know your thoughts about it, whether you were into it, if you hated it, or whatever. Alright, that's about all my thoughts on this one. Tune in next week for a review of Feeding a Banana Hole to My Cat. I'll see you guys next time. Hi guys, David here. I am currently being chased through the darkest forest of deep eternal slumber by the most frightening and large Finnish men. And we did it in only 24 hours. This is insane! I just wanted to thank all of you guys and please send help and send a copy of the new epic Winter Sun album, The Forest Seasons. But please send help. <laughs>